I start this guitar build by planing the body blank, first making the joint, checking its straightness, and when it's straight and square, I can glue the body blank. When the glue is dry, I can plane the body flat. And then route some cavities. First, the neck pocket. And then the pickup cavity using an unmade template for each cavity. I want this body to be fully carved, so I start by pre carving the body with a plane set with a high pass. I could trace the outline of the body and cut it at the band saw. I continue carving the front side with gouges, small planes, and scrapers to leave a smooth finish. I could send the body to its final shape using my drum sander. Still some cavity rotting. I like to shake the control cavity cover with my hand plane until I get a perfect fit matching the carve of the body with the cover. The next cavities are carved by hand, just removing most of the wood with a drill and then with a chisel carving the cavity. Those cavities will receive LEDs uh, that will lighten some optical fiber. I continue carving the body with a body chamfer made with the same tools. And the last cavity for the 9 volt batteries. As you have seen on the finished instrument, the guitar has some grooves for optical fib and I wrote them using a different top plate for each groove. No right for mistake here. It has to be perfect the first time. I use CA glue to glue the optical fiber into the grooves to maintain them in place while I will pour epoxy in the grooves. To prepare for the epoxy pouring, I use hot glue to retain the epoxy into the grooves. My girlfriend could mix the epoxy while I was making some nice shots. And I could pour the epoxy into the grooves. When the epoxy was dried, I could clean the mess using small planes and scrapers. I finish the carve of the body with carving the center part of the body using small coaches, a pleasure to do in the Corina. I also carved an integrated tailpiece in which the string will be retained. I reinforce the tailpiece with a piece of aluminum. Onto the neck now. The neck is made from sapelli and I could start by planing it flat. Checking the flatness on the entire length of the board. I could cut the headstock angle using a Japanese hand saw. And plane the headstock angle until it's really flat and ready to glue. I 
I can route the truss rod channel until the truss rod fits and I also carve the headstock to match the carve of the body. Next, onto the fretboard, I cut the fret slots. I could cut the fretboard to shape. And finish the shaping with a plane. I then glue bindings cut from the same board. And I could then cut the neck to the same shape than the fretboard. I also make inlays in the neck using a rotor jig. Using a chisel for the small details, the inlays have been filled with epoxy. I then cut the headstock to its shape, first using the bandsaw. The bandsaw is a great tool to thickness the headstock as well. And like all the carvings of this guitar, I use hand tools to finish the carve of the volute. I can glue the fretboard to the neck. Using pins to locate the fretboard in place. And I could then plane the neck flush with the fretboard. With my number 7 plane, I plane the fretboard flat. And I could then start the radius making a compound radius with sanding blocks. Then comes the fretting, cutting friends to length, removing the tongue, filing it until it completely disappears, and I can glue the frets in place. First, I place them with a hammer and finish with the fret press. I could cut them to length and finish the fret job. I then carve the neck. Again using hand tools, planes, rasps. Poke shave. I change the tool depending on what part of the neck I'm carving. I just bought a CNC during the build so I used it as my first carve to carve a headstock logo and it worked really well for that. The inlay is then filled with epoxy and then the headstock veneer can be glued in place. I finish shaping the headstock to the perfect shape. I then glued the neck in place. And when it was glued, I did the last carving of this guitar with carving the neck joint. With this carve, it gives a very easy access to all the frets. I could then do the final sanding using hand sanding or power sanding. First step of the finish is to apply grain filler. Then to send the excess grain filler. This guitar was quite a nightmare to send with all the calves it has on the body. I prepare for painting with applying masking tape. 
and then I could apply the primer. For the color I'm using, you need a black primer. I could then apply the paint. I use the chameleon paint that needs more coats to really be visible. I could then remove the masking tape and start clear coating the guitar. I think that color looks incredible and really gives it that finish that I wanted. When the clear coat was dry, after three weeks, I could wet sand the clear coat using different grits until all the shiny spots are gone. And then I could polish the guitar using my random orbital sander and some foam pads. I use different grits of polishing paste until the gloss really comes out. Each optical view of the body is lightened with an LED that I could change the color if I want. With LEDs installed, the last steps were to install all the hardware, strings and do the setup. And it was done! Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon on my channel for next videos. I really enjoyed building this guitar and I think it turned out really cool. Check the sound. Feel free to vote for my guitar build on the Great Guitar Build of 2021 website.